Now, after college, you were drafted to the Chicago Bulls. Yeah. Right? But you turned down the offer because you were making more money in the well, streets? that's what they say. The reality is, is uh, I wasn't going to play with the Bulls no damn way because I had been committed to the game. And if I'm that guy and you're reading what I said to you earlier, and I'm dealing with these people and they can't move unless it's through me, then you know if I'm gone, nothing happens. So I was committed to the game and I wasn't going to the Bulls, but I did go to the Bulls because I just wanted to go and just bust that ass. Just, you see what I'm saying? Because you're a basketball player. But when I got there, the coach was telling me something about, he, uh, Norman Lee said, I, I got this, I said, he said, I got this guard, you know, he came before we knew you was over the draft because you really got another year of college, but you went in, you, you went into the, I said, wait a minute, man, I didn't go into shit. I got another year of college. And if you told me anything about another guard, I never would have signed that contract. What the hell, I don't need you know, $40,000. He said, I, he said so I, get best you, I guess you carry $40,000 in the truck of the car. I said, you're damn right. The one right out there that White Rose was. So then he went to tell me about, he, what he said, he came from a bigger school than yours. And we had committed to him first, Pee Wee. And I know you was telling the truth, but tell the truth in advance. Don't tell me that shit later. You know, he couldn't play nowhere near good as I could. He couldn't, he could only go to the right. Now he became, and I'm, Never lie, named Norm Van Lee. He became a superior player. And I got to give him credit because I always liked him after that tough, hard-nosed guard. And I, him and Jerry Sloan him and liked to watch him. He became that, but I was that. You see what I'm saying? So now, two years after that, when they, they, he, they, they traded him and my coach kept telling me, they want you to come back, want you to come back. But, you know, when you're from the life I'm from, I don't want to come back because I'm going to judge you by your word. If I say it, I put my life on it. And I'm, everybody know if I say something, I'm putting a life on it. I'm going to mean what I say. So you, they did that, got me to sign the contract. And I think that might have been maybe why they didn't even want to deal with those other teams. Because they tell you one thing, you, know, you sign the contract, then it's something else. No. You know, I had already proved who I was as a basketball player because I had already proved it against the greatest players of that era. So it wasn't nothing to prove in that regard. I was just soul searching, trying to, on a mission, trying to figure out what my life was about. And I found that mission, you know. Complex did a list of the 20 greatest basketball players to never play in the NBA. They put you as number two, and they put uh, Len Bias as number one. Len Bias? Uh, Len Bias is number one, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, like I said, I really don't know. I know Lynn Bryce didn't play point guard, right? Uh, I'm not sure. No, he damn uh, sure didn't play point guard because it wasn't a better point guard on the planet Earth than me. You know when I played in Norfolk State, you know how many turns I had all year? Three. They say, no, two. They say three. I remember two. You know somebody did that? You know somebody led the nation scoring at 47 point average? You see what I'm saying? You know somebody went to a college and won every award that you could win in four years in one year, plus the first person could draft the NBA and the ABA. You know somebody did that? You know somebody averaged 35 points a game in high school and used to outscore the other team? You know somebody lit, lit a pro league like Rucker where all the premier pros play, the only guy to ever lead that league in consecutive years? Yeah, and didn't go to the joint. And when I went to the joint, they were saying, well, that semi-pro league, they ain't that good. Guess what? Then they sent Wally Jones up there with Phil Berman. You know Wally Jones on all defensive team in the NBA every year? He guarded me. Ask him. You know how much I scored? 70. He said, Pee Wee, let me tell you something. I heard you could play. I never in my life believed you could play as good as you can play. Now, he's in Florida, and I get you his, get you his number. You could ask him. So all I'm saying is when people talk, say whatever you like. I didn't do a lot of talking with basketball. I just did a, I just, you see what I'm saying? I just did. Like Oscar Robertson said on the internet, Pee Wee, is, you know, he said, what did he say? I was doing, a, uh, my, my son was in school and they was doing something about the history of basketball and James Naismith, and he was looking at, the school coach was looking at in the computer. Now he said, Oscar Robinson said, you've been in the crossover. I didn't know that, Pee Wee. And I thought to myself, yeah, that, the stutter step and, 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 and the 360, and not 360, and I really didn't bet the 360 jump shot. I, I stole it from a guy in Virginia, Essex Thompson, was, ooh, because he shoot. And I seen him do it in the corner. I'd never seen it that far. So I kind of copied it. And when I, I was the first one did it in New York, in Rucker, 
They won the game, and they wanted what this guy doing, turning around in midair. I wasn't shooting. I was way out past the foul line, 360. You know, just turn around there and make that shot. But so now they do those things, and it's just things I see people do now. And it's interesting to me that I did them things. So I never, ever looked to compare myself with other players. So I just tell people, those are the things I did. So you were the, the first person to really execute a crossover oh, yeah. and a spin move. Everybody know that? Oscar Robertson said it. No, Earl Monroe was the first one who did the spin move that I know about. Officially, see, people did things, but if you can't make the thing unstoppable, then you didn't really do it. Shit. You know, it's like being able to run. Everybody can run, but everybody ain't going to go to the Olympics and win, win a first place prize. That guy's a runner. You just running. So Monroe, that spin, and I had a real effective spin, but I wasn't doing what Monroe was doing because his spin was his. I couldn't get it. I tried, but I couldn't get it. I had my own spin, and I never lost the ball, and I learned how to, like I said, learn how to be. be see, because people don't understand. They'll say things. And then when you look into him, you say, oh, shit, I can't believe he did it. I can't believe. Or they look at a guy who played street basketball, played great, and they won't even say to yourself, well, suppose he had to be in collegiate basketball. Suppose he had to run this system. Suppose he had to do that there. Suppose he, he could he really do everything coach wanted him to do? Or was he a guy that was someplace that had the green light and could do everything he wanted to do? And everybody hit all those mistakes, like you see now in basketball. And I see All-American game, and I'm still waiting. The game is over, and I'm still waiting to see somebody make two fire shots in a row. You know, I was just kidding with my son about maybe two years ago. I was in the gym, and I shot 20 fire shots with my eyes closed. You know how many I made in a row? 19. I missed the 20th shot, and I'm still mad about it with my eyes closed. So you tell me about these guys that can't shoot a fire shot. That's great players. Tell me about these guys that can't have all them turnovers, five and six turnovers, but you're all-star. So you see the game has changed in that sense. The criteria for basketball is different back then. If somebody shot 50% back then, guess what? He never got the ball from me. Because why am I giving you the ball? 50%, you know what I'm saying? You're supposed to be giving me the ball. And Joe Hammett, the guy I played with in the backcourt, and never saw nobody shoot a ball. Nobody ever saw shoot a ball better than him. Under pressure, it is consistently shot. A basketball and Curry, shit, they better leave that kid alone. Cause Curry, I don't know what they keep trying to compare him with people. Curry is 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 the phenom, phenom basketball players as ever. Now LeBron, sure you got to give LeBron credit. LeBron would definitely be considered the best all-around player in the game today. But Curry, oh, Curry's the best player in basketball. There's no question about it. How would you compare Curry to Michael Jordan? You can't, and the reason you can't is, and people don't understand this, the reason you can't is, you can't, and this is what I'm trying to tell you about me, greatness never, ever produces itself in the same form. Never, unless you can show me two basketball players for you to like. Well, Kobe, Kobe and Michael Jordan kind of play similar. No, they didn't. Kobe and Michael Jordan never played similar. Kobe, let me tell you why they never played similar. Now watch, I'll tell you this here. If Kobe, did you see what happened the year when Kobe stopped shooting and started play, playing point? Did you see Kobe playing point better than every point guard in the league, passing the ball, seeing the court, bringing the ball down, handling the ball, not getting turnovers? So that means Kobe was more of a, like a Pee Wee Kirk that could turn it off and on. You never saw Jordan play point. So it was different. Now it had to come, they both were scoring machines. Now that was the truth. But they played two different games. Jordan came down the court to do one thing, dunk in your face, jump over the team and dunk. Kobe didn't come down. Kobe came down to cross you, more finesse, pull the string, different kind of ball players. And Curry's coming down the court to do what? Everybody, and that's what I love about Curry, because he personifies real greatness in the game. Guess what? Everybody in the league know Curry's coming down the court to do one thing, shoot the ball. Tell me why nobody can stop him. Because the greatness. He put you at either option, or they, what they call the NBA. I think they say put you in the, the mix or something, but it's either option they're really putting you in. And, 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 you, and you can't stop the either option because either you're there to stop and he's gone or you ain't to stop and he's shooting. But he, he, he grew in the game from, from, to become a good ball man. He sees the court. He don't feel pressure. He, I know why he don't feel no pressure because I haven't felt none. But I ain't going to tell you. For him, I ain't gonna t for me, I'm finished playing. You know, I tell young kids and help them, but I know exactly why I don't feel no pressure. No, it's no great. He's the greatest player of the game today. LeBron is all do. 
the greatest all-around player. And you got to love LeBron. See, see, LeBron is not only the greatest player, all-around player. He's like the, to me, and I have to say this, as a human being, LeBron is the greatest, bar nobody, human being in the game of basketball in the sense that he lives that life that life that other basketball head players have not lived, his generosity, who he is to, what he's done for the community, what he's done for the, completely for Cleveland, how he helped players get on teams. I mean, the way he, so many outside stories I know about LeBron helping people. I remember LeBron put a commercial together with, with, with the legends. Uh, the legends in street basketball and the, and the, and the legends uh, in the pros and, and put the commercial together. Something Jordan never did. The way LeBron will react to his own reality in terms of him being a black man and at the same time being a great man in a sport. I mean, and all that pressure on LeBron. LeBron is a phenomenon as a person. Look at his family. Tell me, tell me when you hear bad stories about LeBron. So I, used to, I used to speak to the NBA rookies. They gave the best presentation every, presentation every year I spoke to them. So it's a lot of unhidden things about everybody. I ain't gonna never reveal none of it, but it ain't nothing unhidden about LeBron. Unbelievable sure. human being, man. You know, they don't come no greater. And I, and I imagine Curry, decent. You can see how decent and respectful he is, but Le, LeBron, yeah, he puts it out there. He make it happen, man, for a lot of people. He, it, it ain't talked about, but it's the things he do. He's that guy. One there. One on my back there. You see it? Okay. One there, one under there, a few. Oh, so you got stabbed all over your body? Yeah. There ain't no loser game from that, you know what I mean? So, I don't see no reason to lie. Yeah. Punch, punch a little Quentin in his mouth. He seemed like a nice guy, man.